That's why you can't trust him with anything. Yeah, I should have known that was coming too. Definitely wasn't expecting that. Now I know why if he has if the camera was on. What a guy. Rain again. Got about eight tenths over the weekend. Another round. So that's about right, as long as it don't get out of control. So a lot of cleaning up going on in here. George got a new pickup. Old parts on a new pickup. I have to put my headache back on so people know it's me and they'll get out of the way. Yep. Because you know, I'm old, I don't drive well. May you need a louder horn or a siren. Hey, air horns. <laughs> A few parts, a few parts put in a new one. Yeah. Tools. Gotta have tools. Brought the truck over to Indiana, get some empty pro box, take them back home, but uh, fun to hook it up at the shed. Only rain two tents over here, not near as, not near as much. Got like eight tents at home. So I'm gonna go, I'm coming out to the spot where I need to rain. Stalker, uh, thick soil, dries out really fast on top. Let's see if the moisture uh, met each other. Sometimes it just gets wet on top, don't rain enough, don't get down to where the moisture level is. Well, I say if it's good here, it's good anywhere. Yep, there's a seed about two inches down. You can see he has not sprouted. There's some other ones here. Yeah, I messed up. I put it in deeper when I came here, but I should have did even deeper yet. Warned up this really dried out fast, but plant two inches it probably should have went all the way down two and a half but this year or this early in the year usually you're going to catch a rain so this one had not germinated yet you know there's some others that are starting to make their uh, way upward in other soil types here but it's moist down to it all the way through it didn't just get wet on top of course this will dry out but I think surely there's another one there Really, that'll be enough. I think we're good. Got hooked back up to the trailer. Take these boxes back. Maybe get them all broke down today. I still got two up robs I gotta go grab sometime. But pick it up my mess. Maybe back to the farm. Boxes unloaded. Me and River are gonna break down all the treated boxes. These are the ones we put corn in. They're all here except for two. We'll get them another time. Time lapse. driving around scouting this morning uh made it up west of hudsonville well first i went by robinson aphidus is gonna get me a new time lapse camera so props to them to uh get my corn growing but in the meantime before i get it uh, my buddy ross west store but robinson had one so i went and borrowed one off him i'm gonna get that set up later this afternoon even though the corn's already up that big where i want it but i want it there because it's off the road won't get stolen it's close to the house so i can check on it Anyways, everything up here is looking good, but we got this field back here tiled and it looks good. It's way drier than normal, but there's one spot right here that water can't get out. So I'm going to dig that off. Several different outlets. There's at least uh, five that I know of. Could be more. One outlet's there. Just held up a little bit here and this is a low, low spot.
Well, that ought to help. Here at Indiana, putting in new culverts. Got to get five uh, bigger culverts put in. So it's out by the farm. This is the ditch that the irrigation crosses to get to this field and that field over there. And the culverts are bad, so we're replacing these. And these are the bridges that let the wheels cross. <laughs> so they're washed out and uh, quite old. So we're upgrading them a little bit. Probably be a lot better. Plus, we put a culvert in where it washes out real bad right there. It runs down the ditch. So, um, hopefully, that won't wash out anymore. And we'll just farm around that a little bit. Having a couple of pro boxes while I'm up here too. Must be the last of the tree and seed boxes I got anywhere but on us. There's some on some other guys, but I use a breakdown with two people. Got the, the new FD240 Macdon heads in here. And 1206. Maybe the best looking tractor there is. I should have parked closer. The four cliffs, four cliffs out of propane. Can't make it. Well, we we'll have to go get this filled up first before we head back. Rubber boots are uh, usually pretty nice when uh, you gotta be in water, but whenever you step in water a little too deep, not real nice. So now I gotta deal with the sock. Denny hasn't hit anyone, so that's that's good. I think he's having fun. Got her tied down. Back to the house. That to me looks like a broken tile. Yep, we put in an eight inch main through here a few years ago. And when we did, we hit this old tile, run it out of the ditch, and it's just still running and sucking the dirt right with her. So we're gonna plug her off. Find something to fit. Well, that's a clean tile with no dirt in there. <laughs> now we're going to get some plastic. Jam in there, and we're going to put some dirt. Sounds like a plan. Now we got to put some dirt in.
putting a headache on the new Ford pickup. I like the headache, I kind of like the looks of it, but it's handy sometimes to haul stuff too. So putting it up there was the easy job. Hard part is figuring out where to wire it in. From experience on my 2017, if you get it back here by the plug, which you think would work, if you wire that headache in there, it thinks you've got a trailer hooked up. And you can kind of understand that. And if you get too far forward, it messes with the computer. So we wired it in right here into this plug. This is the wire for the headache. And we'll get this all taped back up and shielded and back on its little clip. But there's a little clip that goes on. And this is the uh, wire for the headache. So I still got to put some zip ties on here to keep everything neat and tied up through there. Have to take a spare, spare tire down to get to everything good. But we're about to get it. This one's a 2023, got it from Silverthorne at Robinson. Um, and they changed the interior some now. It's kind of a two-tone. What I ordered was the beige and comes two-tone like this and that's fine I like that all right screens a lot bigger it's got some some changes to it over the 17 of course that's been a few years and this is uh, Lariat Ultimate extended cab long longest cab I could get that's for the fuel tank I like the big fuel tank pull a fifth wheel camper with it several miles over the years that's gotten to be an issue you see where this bed hits me? It also hits the back of the neck of the camper, unless I run it down the road tipped up, which I'm gonna to have to do. The 17, there was a four inch piece I could take out, just a block to make it taller, and put an inch in, and that helped tremendously. This one's not made that way. You can't no longer, or I can't reach in here and get anything off the bed floor, I can't reach it. Yeah, you can let the tailgate down and reach it. Uh, if I tear at the back, comes down nice, all right. And you can reach there and get it if it's right here. If it goes up to the front, you can't reach anything. If it weighs 150 pounds, it's a little hard to get it up this high. And why is that bed that tall? Nobody's going to haul grain, gravel, dirt to mount anything in this. And a problem to hook up to fifth wheels. You think about that, Ford. We need a bed we can use and not just something that's stylish. Be better if it was about this tall. I remember years and years ago loafing, leaning on the bed, and it was about to hear on me. Look how much things come up. And for what purpose, I don't know. Maybe somebody likes them for something other than looks, but it's not very useful. Front end's a little different. And, uh, you know, they keep going up. They're higher than they used to be, of course. But I think that pretty good price for the old one. Be with my friend Vlad Flanders up there. And, you know, if they only take advantage of you once, I don't think he's going to do that. Hey, back to the farm. All the boxes are unloaded. Salford's out here unfolded. Tell you what, this heck of a company. <laughs> they break, they fix everything you break before anybody shows up to see it. <laughs> Our rates high though. Hey, I hope not. Keith Bell, everybody. This is Chris Poppy. He's one of our head engineers from the plant up in Salford, Ontario. Just came down to look at the machine, uh, checking over all the areas for wear. Uh, Try to have a lot of rebuildable joints, uh, greaseless locations. So we're just making sure all the bushings are all staying together and nothing season up. Well, that, what have you found? How's, how's it looking? Well, tight things are staying tight and <laughs> loose things are staying loose, right? Yeah, so, that's so far, good. so good. Yeah, everything's perfect. So we didn't we didn't mess it up yet, anyways. No, not no. yet, anyway. <laughs> so 4,200 acres in, a little bit more than that. She's definitely dirty. We got her a little bit of mud, but uh, yeah. pass an inspection, I guess. That's it, Pass. Please. All right. Are you please. You're the engineer, Chris. I'm pleased. All okay. Right. As long as the engineer's happy, everybody's happy. <laughs> yep. Engineer's happy. Uh, Reese is happy. Far happy farmer's right? happy. Farmer's happy. <laughs> Salesman, they always say it's uh, good. I'm grinning. <laughs> None of the basket bearings are out, and uh, the bell cranks on the the gang angle adjust is doing its job and staying tight, and everything that we do different from everybody else seems to be really working. 
yeah, everything's working great. It's all tight. The bearings are all spinning nice and smooth yet. All the pivots are nice and tight. Well, what's this thing got on it? Hundred hour greasers? Is that the earliest? No, greasers? we went. We did, we originally when we first came out, we thought we were going to do a hundred hours, yeah. and then we got to some of the pivot points on the wings. There's enough weight and mass, and and it, that it just was too long. So we went back to a forty hour. Oh, that ain't bad. So everything on Tell this machine is a forty hour <laughs> greaser. <laughs> forty hours. We can deal with that. What's the grease ever on your corn planter? Uh, fifty. 50 most of them there yep yeah that's fine yeah. well i got a red one the deers are every day <laughs> the gauge wheels on the deer every day oh, Mine are oh, only oh, every 50. there we go got the old culverts out loaded up got the tip one in filling it up right now and then after jay's done doing that take a skid steer over the tile and uh, get some dirt from over there back fill it up be a lot better than doing it by hand so. after that I think we might be done here all in Georgia out this morning joining the Indiana team to put in a culvert so more culverts today and it's drying off, sun's out, chance rain tomorrow. I think David may be nitrating again today, side dressing again today. I'm not sure. He's out looking right now. I bet I bet he does. We need the backhoe over here to load some dirt into this while the excavator's digging. And we don't have a trailer at the farm right now to take it over. So Rivers never drove a backhoe forward. So we decided to make him drive it across the bridge. It's stuck behind him. See if we can scare him in the middle. Uh -huh. Pretty day out. It is nice. Dead river down, way down that way. Take an old culver out, put a new one in. We got some, uh, we got some old field dirt here that been there for a while. So we'll get that loaded into the dump truck with the backhoe. Comes Reese with the first load of dirt. Just got down here. You guys got this done in a hurry. Yeah. Well, good deal. So it's gonna do some good. Yeah. It's gonna be way better. down here at Arch Mill nowhere and as you can see some of these culverts just this irrigation crosses don't have a whole lot of cover left so I'm just gonna dip some dirt out of the ditch and throw it on top of it Got her all loaded all up, up. Got to turn the flashers off. To the dump truck. Take it home. River wants to drive it this way. Now we got a riser. It's been cut off out here, probably with a combine head. So we got to dig down a little ways. Put in a new one. Start digging around it. Got to dig down to the bottom of that yellow belt. You aren't done yet. What do you mean? It's only a foot or two. Jeez. We had a little 
problem with one of the rows on the planter wasn't planting just right. So we've disassembled this as a lower part of the uh, unit that takes the seed down to the ground. And what we found out is we got an issue here with the uh, one of the gears. The gear itself is fine and everything there, it's got bearings. This little roller that turns the belt, this two-piece thing. I don't know if you can see that, the shaft is wore down. Where it, and the bearings are fine. The gear is fine. The drive is, driven gear is fine. So it's all good. All I need is this inch and a half long shaft. You can't buy that. You got to get this whole thing, this whole big 200 and some dollar piece for a two dollar shaft. It's kind of what we've gotten to anymore. You can't buy parts, you gotta buy units. Oh well, it is what it is, right? We'll get her together here in a little bit and uh, be good as new. At least it ought to be. Because if it's not, it'll be my fault. I'm assuming this is a DC motor, so if you hook it up backwards, it'll run backwards. So to stop that, with my pea brain, I have to take pictures of it. And that is correct. Good deal. Uh, this belt that goes in here looks like you just stick it in there any old way. But there is a difference. There's a small bevel on this flap. And they actually put a drawing in here to show you which way that goes. Because it would be very easy to get it on there backwards. We had a couple that just broke one little flight off of that elevator belt. And it, it showed up. Said it was messed up and it was. Now this is going to go over top. And we put this on and all that's left is snapping on a little piece and putting a rubber boot on the bottom. And this thing will be a new one. It just snaps in place here. Other piece goes on top of it. And that's all there is to it. When you get it together, this is what it looks like. And it just slides right down in the planter. Not much to hooking it up. So this way we'll have a spare. Won't be shut down while we're going after parts. And the old one here, I'm going to put back together. Just in case something changes where we can get these pieces would be nice if we could fix it because there's not that much wrong with it but you know if you can't you can't right so we'll stick it back together and hope things change over time and we can get it see we got some parts here from think sign that's uh people that made the sign for our church and we're having a little trouble with the uh, Having trouble with the dust to dawn sensor and the temperature sensor. So they got a replacement for that. And we'll take care of that here probably tomorrow. So we cannot wait to see you. Oh yeah, you hungry? Yeah, we hungry. You got it. Looks like you got it. We got it. See? Did it flip oh, over no. easy? Well, with our expertise, I'd say he's got a video of it always full. Uh oh. Got it all hooked up. He's a ladder. A little sketchy, but we talked about just dragging it over there and then flipping it, but might as well uh, try this, I guess. Not really sure how that's going to work with whenever it wants to come down. Hopefully we don't break anything. Getting close, we got it turned around. Now just trying to put it there. That's gonna be the 
hardest part, I, I would think. But then he's doing good running the excavator. He, uh, being safer today than usual, so that's good for me. job's all done. So dad's now dip, dipping out the ditch. We got all these tile outlets for the center ground tile system. So they can run better. Actually done. way down there. Hanging there baby. I'm out in the right on out here in the right field where I was planting uh corn into can roll it pretty good it's come up pretty good looks good everywhere did a decide to switch my precision uh planting flagging kit the emergence kit to here because i thought there might i could see a little bit of difference here where everywhere else i didn't really see that much difference but yeah there was definitely a difference both rows had 31 seeds come up like it was supposed to the furrow force all of them but one came up on day one and i had one come up on day two the K system, 23 on day one, five on day two, three on day three. So as we all know, as farmers, it's good to have even emergence. And uh, I don't think it's this way everywhere, but I picked a, a clay field hill that had the rye on it. I thought that, you know, conditions where sometimes you have a little hard time closing the trench. So that's why I went here and at least in this one instance, these two rows, Furrow force on the uh, on the emergence win. Been driving around scouting today, seeing what's going on and where David could go. He can go pretty much anywhere in Illinois. The corn's all big, up big enough to where he can roll good, even the rye field. And Indiana's even up now, but it'll be a while before he gets over there. And it's dry enough everywhere right now. Chance of rain, we take it or if we miss it, that'll be okay. Pretty good spot right now. Um, Man, everything's looking good. So far, so good, but it can all change in a hurry, that's for sure. So, I'm gonna go see if I can find David somewhere and get a little drones of him. I don't think he's been carrying the GoPro with him, so we'll get some in cab with that side dress before long. We got a lot of that to do yet, but go see if I can find him. I think he's out on the field we call St. Louis. Go see if I find him, get a few drones of him.
We're gonna hop on a little mower before it's time to go home. Trip's got ball game tonight, so leave a little early this evening. So it's gonna be it for this week. Driver stuff, go to ivers-farms.myshopify.com. Thanks for watching and uh, see you next week.